Hey everybody, I'm Michelle Roy of Dragonfly Wellness and this is Wellness Wednesday. So today we are talking about the winter solstice. It is that time of year again, the day where in the Northern Hemisphere, we have the least amount of light. We are in, immersed in the most darkness. And uh, there's something that is really uh, important. There's, it's really symbolic. It's metaphorical, it's literal. There, there are many energies at play around the solstice. And uh, I kind of feel like I talk about this every year around this time, but it is part of the natural cycle of, of living, right? It's part of the natural cycle of the seasons that we find ourselves at this time, uh, at this time of the year, in this place where we are in that darkness. And so to start our inspiration today, I'm going to leave you with, or sorry, I'm sorry, going to start you with a little uh, excerpt from Anamkara. This is by John O'Donohue. This is one of my very, very, very favorite books. And, um, and I just want to share this with you. The world rests in the night. Trees, mountains, fields, and faces are released from the prison of shape and the burden of exposure. Each thing creeps back into its own nature within the shelter of the dark. Darkness is the ancient womb. Nighttime is the womb time. Our souls come out to play. The darkness absolves everything. The struggle for identity and impression falls away. We rest in the night. The dawn is a refreshing time, a time of possibility and promise. All the elements of nature, stones, fields, rivers, and animals, are suddenly there anew in the fresh dawn light. Just as darkness brings rest and release, so the dawn brings awakening and renewal. So it's important that we really honor this time of darkness. You know, everybody likes to complain about it and move the clocks around so that we don't have to contend with darkness. But it's really important. We're, we're afraid of the dark often. And the darkness is where the possibility lies. You know, John O'Donohue writes in here about how right before dawn, it seems to really be even darker, right? The darkness kind of dips. It's kind of like how it becomes coldest right before dawn. We're in that dark hold. And if you knew nothing of the dawn and you just thought that's all there was, right? You, you wouldn't know it was that this beautiful light was coming to you. But we do know that. We do know that lightness follows the darkness, that dawn follows the night. And that's why it's important that we take this time to look in our own darkness and see what's there, what we can let go of, what we can grow out of the darkness. A seed lives in darkness until it's born in the spring. Right? What can we, what can we nurture there to bring into the light in the spring? What, what can we let go of? What needs to be churned and plowed and, and released? And then we anticipate the dawn. We can anticipate that time of renewal, that time, that springtime. Right, when everything is coming to life. And no doubt when, when uh, the spring equinox rolls around, I'll be talking to you about that then too. But this is the time we're going to begin to emerge ever so slowly from the darkness. So allow yourself to be there. Honor it. Honor what is growing, what seeds have been planted inside you and make sure that you are, you know, you're nurturing the ones you really want to grow, all right? All right, everybody, that's your inspiration today. Do something to honor the solstice in whatever way that is for you. There are many, many, many rituals available online if you're just stuck for, I don't know what to do for the, summer, for the winter solstice. Go online and look, there's a million things you can do. Uh, I'm only encouraging you to just be courageous and look, look at the darkness. All right, everybody, have a fantastic Wednesday and I'll be seeing you again very soon. Namaste.